I think we're very close to the beginning of the run if, if we're not at the beginning of the run, Paul. There's almost 60 countries now with uh, close to 90,000 cases and 3,000 deaths and places like Iran where we really have no idea of the, the true scope or scale of the outbreak. And that also goes for the United States where there are probably lot, a lot more cases than have been detected. So it, it feels like, apart from uh, apart from the health crisis, there's this geopolitical element to it as well. Because, as you say, the governments that could be giving as much information as possible either don't know or don't want to. They have uh, populations that don't want to self-report because, if nothing else, they know that there's a two-week quarantine period. And God forbid, if you actually have it, um, things can get a whole lot worse from there. Um, is that different than, say, SARS? Is that different because you don't just have China, you've got Iran, you don't just have Iran, you have parts of Europe, you don't just have parts of Europe, you have the United States that are all sort of playing a different information game? Look, I think compared to SARS, the uh, extent or infectiousness of, of this virus is, is far more apparent. And you're right, it involves a number, number of uh, other states uh, in the world with varying degrees of local transmission and a complexity that we didn't necessarily see with SARS. Uh, like everyone, obviously, we were heartbroken to hear what had happened to the bloke in WA, but the, the details of... Um, how isolated he was in the final hours of his life, I think are even particularly heartbreaking for people. Are these the necessary steps that those that are, that get it and then become in the final days, that, that they have to have no physical contact with their family? Um, is this a precaution or because at that point in time, as it's killing you, you become even more infectious? Look, and we're still learning those, uh, learning about those issues with this virus, Paul. And we certainly know with SARS, for instance, the so-called super spreaders, the people who could infect lots more people than a normal person with SARS could, they were often very sick people in hospital. So their immune system was down and they were producing a lot of virus. So. I guess there are two aims with a, a, a pandemic plan, not that this necessarily represents a pandemic, but in looking after these uh, kind of situations, we want to make sure that the sick people recover. Uh, but if they don't, we don't want anyone else to get infected and go through a similar thing. All right. Uh, now, just also worth talking about here is uh, we know that in Melbourne they're trying to get their head around a, uh, a vaccine. There's also Israel, where the claim is within 90 days they might be able to get there. Where else in the world is, uh, is doing some serious work? And if you had to put your money down, um, where do you think the vaccine comes from? Oh, look, I, I don't know the answer to that, but certainly I, I know in terms of uh, who will be the first to come out with a vaccine, but the US is also uh, putting together a vaccine. In about uh, four to six weeks, they're going to start human trials, which will probably go on for about three or four months, and then it might take another few months after that, uh, if those trials are successful, that uh, we will see the vaccine widely deployed. So whoever does it, uh, and whoever gets the prize, uh, it will still take many months, Paul. Yeah, because that's the key, right? So let's imagine it's 90 days, OK? Now, obviously, that is the fastest version, and there's a lot of maybes between now and then. Um, what is the yep. process once, OK, bang, I've got it, What's required? How much production? How many vials do you have to go through? Do you then have to pass regulations in different countries? Uh, explain the process. Let's imagine uh, we wake up, breaking news, they've got a vaccine. Then what happens? So you have to do uh, different types of trials, phase one, phase two uh, studies to start off with, to first of all see, even though they've developed the vaccine, is it actually safe to give to people? And then once you've worked out that it's safe, then you have to work out whether it works. So you do that uh, in, in a larger group of people. And then after that, it has to be registered. And you're quite right. Depending on the country, there are regulatory processes. But I would suspect in this sort of event where we're facing a pandemic, to some extent, those regulatory processes would be fast-tracked. And of course, as you correctly mentioned, even if everything's uh, given the go-ahead, we would still have to, uh, or the company would still have to produce that in uh, large amounts. And that also takes time. Yeah. All right, Professor, I have in my hot little hand, let's call it imaginary here, um, a round the world ticket, a free around the world ticket for you. Uh, would you be taking me up on the offer anytime soon? Uh, 
Right now, particularly around the world ticket, I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> because um, as, much as, as much as I like surprises, uh, there are certain surprises I don't want to get, like landing in a country and learning of, uh, that there's uh, local transmission in that country. All right. So, well, till then, probably not at this stage. All right. We holiday at home and I'll have to put that ticket back in my pocket, mate. As soon as uh, that vaccine comes out, look, feel free to cash it in. I mightn't answer the phone, but see what happens. Professor, thank you for the chat. Uh, in the meantime, uh, look, I think the panic buying is way too much, a little bit silly in Australia. Yes, something's about to happen here. Um, for everyone watching right now who's been seeing this all day, every day, what do you want to say to them? Yes, so we're st although we've had one case of local transmission, we haven't got sustained local transmission in Australia. I follow the health departments of the states and territories and the federal government, and when we need to buy extra uh, rations because there might be a period of isolation, then I'll go ahead and do it. I certainly don't think we should be panic buying at the moment. Sanjaya, thank you so much. All the best, Professor. Thank you, Paul, for having me.